Okay, uh, uh, I'm going to call a meeting to order. Uh, I'm Peter Pelsett, the chair. Um, Chris Cody is next. And our friend here is here as well. Um, this is, uh, I think, just an informational meeting. We've discussed amongst ourselves that we will probably formally vote on this on a as a, at a select board meeting. This is not an official select board meeting, it's just a hearing. So, um, and I'd just like to uh, just quickly, if I may, just go through sort of a summary of the cr chronology of what's, what's happened, how long it's taken and the, the hard work that's been applied for the town plan. Uh, the first meeting was December 16th, 2019. And then there were meetings on the, uh, in March of 20, and uh, a, a series of other um, events happened. But, uh, and then public engagement, there were two, uh, you know, the, the surveys, one was electronic and one was mailed. That was in uh, June and August of 21. Uh, and then we uh, also did a second uh, homeowner survey in July of 21, community va values mapping session in February of 21, additional in-person telephone in -mail and email interviews, uh, August 28, 21, special public meeting, uh, a formal draft review, um, plan distributed to bordering towns. On June 21, October, October 20, edits to the plan made based on comments from citizens. December 20, 21, plan adopted by the Planning Commission. December 27, plan submitted to the Select Board and, and Town Clerk by the Planning Commission. Uh, March 14th, 22, Select Board resolved to hold a public hearing, and here we are. Um, I just I just want to applaud uh, the Planning Commission uh, uh, for the for the terrific work they've done. It's I think it's a great document, and uh, um, and uh, I guess we're going to have a show and tell or, or video or uh, something to no videos, no videos, no. just show and tell. slides, uh, just yeah. slides. Okay. So uh, do you want to take over on that? On oh, that? Sure. Yeah, sure. okay. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Holding this meeting, this is the statutory. No, I know. I know. Yeah. If the select board didn't hold this, we could not have it adopted. So the requirement. Planning Commission members, Planning Commission has changed somewhat. Uh, Right now there are five members, with Michael Gray is the chair. The uh, next planning commission meeting is Monday night, I believe. Mm -hmm. And there will be one more planning commission member, perhaps, yes, introduced. Yeah, uh, uh, town resident, interesting being on the planning commission, so that's part of the agenda for Monday night. There's only been one resignation? Just one. Okay. And, not everyone's abandoned ship. <laughs> <laughs> okay, documentation. Documentation is it was key to this project. Uh, all the planning commission documents have been posted on the town website, and there's the hyperlink to all the documents. Uh, meeting agendas have also been posted, and today's presentation, a link to that is posted as well. And now we'll get into the uh, meat of the presentation. So we in the Planning Commission, or me as a former Planning Commissioner, have been working on this project for approximately 24 months, holding public meetings, uh, eliciting input from the members of the public, reaching out to them individually, you know, through, as, as Peter said, uh, three uh, townwide surveys and on and on. You know, everyone's invited to the Planning Commission meetings. Those are held every third, third Monday. Uh, so the original, or the last town plan was adopted in 2003. So hence the need for a new town plan. A lot has changed not only in, in the town of Woodbury, but also statewide as well in terms of uh, statutes for town planning. And vision for the future was a collaborative effort, and our English teacher Michael had the final edits to it, 
And that's the vision that we believe uh, fits, fits Woodbury. And town plan, there had been some trepidation about the town plan, that once the town plan was adopted, it compelled the select board to spend money or uh, have the taxes increase based upon the stipulation in the town plan. But that's not so. It's not a regulatory document, and it's not an ordinance. And the last bullet says it does not commit the town to spend any money. And any of the proposed actions, and there are several action items, as we'll see later on in the presentation, within the town plan that may require some spending, but if that happens, would have to go through the select board in order for that to happen. And the town plan, again, it's pretty self-evident. It paints a clear vision of the future, affords party status and state regulatory hearings. And those, that's a key element to having approved an approved town plan because the town would have a seat at the table at Public Utility Commission regulatory hearings, especially focusing on siting of alternative energy, such as wind farms or uh, solar arrays. So uh, uh, a contractor couldn't come in and buy a plot of land downtown and just put a wind tower up or a, you know, a solar farm. They couldn't do that. We would have to, well, the town would have to have party status and agree to that siting. And, you know, the bullets are pretty self-explanatory, promotes prudent investment, helps manage future costs, and contains an action plan, which we'll get into later, that identifies implementation steps. And the two sub-bullets under contains an action plan are key, because once you have an, an approved town plan, you can leverage grant monies from the state. Without a town plan, you're restricted as to the number of grants and the types of grants that you can apply for. So once we, or the select board approves or, or not the town plan, uh, it would allow the planning commission and other entities in town to apply for additional grants. So it achieves its purpose basically with these five bullets. So mechanisms to implement the plan's provisions are in the implementation program and in the future land use map. Excuse me, land use map, which we'll get into later in the presentation. Uh, various bodies of the town government have the responsibility to implement the plan. In, yeah, implement the plan. It'd be Select Board, Conservation Commission, Planning Commission. The plan, again, is not legally binding and it does not commit the town to spend any money. And the Select Board, again, must approve not only spending but any ordinances. Say if the uh, Planning Commission agrees that our 2000, oh, 19, excuse me, 1973 zoning ordinance needs to be updated then that would require the steps to go through when you produce a new ordinance. So I can envision the Planning Commission making that happen in the next few years. But again, the Select Board would have to approve that. And the good thing about the plan is that it can be amended any time. You know, the plan is good for eight years, but within that eight-year time frame, it can be amended. So if anything, should happen in terms of land use in Woodbury, uh, the plan can certainly be revisited and amended as appropriate. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, is there a, a process possibly for having voter approval of a zoning ordinance? That would be up to the select board. Well, I mean, you know, I, I could research it myself, but I just thought you might know. <laughs> Isn't that going on very well right now? Um, I, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. anyway. Okay. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's 
I don't know the answer to that either. I think, um, you know, like the approval of the town plan, it could be either the select board that approves it or it could be approved at a, a town meeting by the, by the town residents. So that, that may be true for a, a zoning ordinance also. But uh, I'll look so into that. have a couple of years to check on that, right? Right. <laughs> But, it, but you're, you're talking about this plan, so if that was the case, you want to expedite that. You wouldn't want to wait until the next uh, traditional town meeting, would you? No, well, the select board decided a number of months ago to go the route of having the select board approve it, and not the town. Yeah. Just partly because we didn't have a town meeting again this year, um, and we wanted to get this thing approved. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that would be something that... Um, you know, that's a possibility for the future. But, and, and it was the former select board that decided that the select board would approve it as opposed to having it approved at town meeting. Okay. Thank you. So plan components, and I, w I won't go all the way through them, but uh, statutorily there are certain components that are required in the town plan. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have those, then your town plan won't be approved. So I put on the, uh, on the handout table up there a letter from the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. And they indicated basically that the our plan will not be subject to review by the Commissioner of Housing and Community Development because in, in essence it, it hit all the benchmarks required for having a municipal plan. And it goes on to say, uh, the state agency plan shall be compatible with the municipality's approved plan, so we have to approve the plan. And we, Woodbury, shall be eligible to apply for additional funds from the municipal and regional planning fund. So, anyhow, the, in essence, the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission has already signed off on the plan, saying that it met all the statutory requirements of a plan, which is a good thing, because we don't, the Planning Commission doesn't want to go back and have to rewrite it. <laughs> right, Dave? <laughs> Okay, again, you know, it's kind of somewhat redundant to the, uh, the timeline. Public input is comprised of three town-wide surveys, two electronic, and one mailed survey. Two of the surveys were town-wide. One of the surveys was focused just on uh, second homeowners. Uh, a lot of one-on-one -on -one interviews, community values workshop, Three special public meetings, front porch forum posts, and monthly meetings. Right here somewhere. I thought it important that I just give you a synopsis of, of the town plan surveys, the final results, and I'll just go over these briefly. And one of the questions I think the most important, important is what do you value most about Woodbury? And you rated these items from one to five, with five being the most important. So small town character was number one. Clean air and water was number two. Affordable land and housing was number three. Reasonable taxes was number four. So go figure. Uh, good schools was number four as well, tied. Recreational opportunities. Uh, was highly rated, and also uh, 35, or actually more than um, nice people, was highly rated too. Lakes and ponds, actually lakes and lakes and ponds, tied with small town character as uh, the most valued asset of Woodbury, and lastly, not overregulated was one of the highest rated uh, categories as well. Mm -hmm. So these final town plan surveys 
are on the website as well under Planning Commission. So I thought it important that you know we understand why people would want to move to Woodbury. <coughs> Just as an aside, uh, I sold one of my motorcycles last Saturday, and a person from Asheville, North Carolina, drove up with a with a trailer and loaded it on his trailer and took it away. And his son was with him. And his son's looking for property in Woodbury. Go, go figure. You know, from Asheville, North Carolina, looking for property in Woodbury. So, was, that, was that as a result of picking up the motorcycle? He was... No, he was looking at it beforehand. Beforehand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so How did that work out? What, the motorcycle? Oh, I, no, the... <laughs> did he buy the land? <laughs> He's still looking. He and his partner are still looking. They like Woodbury because of the, quote, small town character and recreational opportunities. He said he liked the number of ponds that he can see. Yeah. So, you know, they're actively seeking land here. So, hmm. you know, why would you leave Asheville? I guess, I don't know. Yeah. So, yes, the motorcycle. It was a Norton. So was it Norton? Yes. Mm -hmm. He did. <laughs> so the purpose and benefits of the plan, these are just some of them, some of the highlights. Planning for the economic health of the town, revitalizing village centers, things like that. Economic development, again, within the village centers. Housing needs, see if we can get some affordable housing in town. You know, multi-unit multi-unit dwellings, accessory dwelling units, things of that nature, and also improving in infrastructure, whether it's high-speed broadband or having our electric companies beef up their distribution plant in order to sustain uh, EV plug-in sites for electric vehicles. In order, I believe in order for Woodbury to institute or to place EV sites EV charging sites, Harbrook would have to upgrade their plant, their distribution plant. Oh. Mm -hmm. And one of the purposes, a long-term guide and basis for local decision making. And lastly, in that little bullet, it meets state's requirements for Act 171, Act 174, and the 2016 uh, Comprehensive Energy Plan. Benefits are enabled to adopt and amend local zoning regula regulations and access grant monies for projects. And now we get into part of the plan which, which was required again, uh, natural settings. And I won't go through each bullet, but uh, we did explore the natural setting aspects in Woodbury, like the percentage of forested, excuse me, lands, lakes, ponds, and wetlands. And it's pretty interesting. We found that 56 of the land, 56% of the land mass in Woodbury, excuse me, is under current use, which I found pretty interesting. Uh, values, again, these were some of the some of the information taken from the community values mapping session we had in February 2021. Uh, the values were hunting and other outdoor recreational activities and lakes and ponds. One of the main concerns was the water quality and potential pollution in Woodbury. And wasn't there something, Michael, are you part of a study studying milfoil or, or something like that? Um, well, there, there are a, a few volunteers in town and statewide that kind of monitor the different lakes and ponds for like Eurasian milfoil yeah. or any of the other invasive plant species or uh, aquatic animal, vertebrates, insects. But we, we hire uh, divers to go down for milfoil. milfoil. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. 
once once it gets established, it's hard to get rid of. And it's another program that the Conservation Commission has sort of been overseeing of um, just putting out different um, uh, tracks to monitor the spread of the emerald ash borer. Mm. So, um, so far we haven't found any in town, but we are there. I think there was some found in Plainfield or whatever, so we're in a circle of high potential, um, except for the very northwest corner of Westwood area is sort of out of that circle. But, so, so it was probably here, but... Um, sure. No. Can I ask, 50% to the current use, um, the Meyer property was for the most part in current use, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. yeah all yeah. of the Meyer properties in current use. So that would significantly impact that That's percentage. Yes, about 50%. <laughs> <Probably 40 of it. laughs> yeah, at least. <laughs> There's 70 parcels in use. In 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 yeah. yeah. How does five of them be here, four or five, if there's changes made to, then the rest is all just the same as it was the years before. Mm -hmm. Does that have an adverse impact on the tax rate? Well, it's, a, it's about an 85% uh, rebate discount or whatever on the edu education tax, which is usually 75 or 80% of the town. Sure, yeah. Yeah, and I don't think it has an adverse effect on the tax base because part of the current use is, is that the state reimburses the towns for what, you know, they do pay less taxes, yeah. um, but the state reimburses, a, I believe this is true, I, I may be mistaken, but um, my understanding of the program is that towns do get um, reimbursement. Yeah. yeah, that's true. I'm not sure if it's 100%, but yeah. that would be interesting to look into that. Yeah. Well, and that was for obvious reasons. I mean, otherwise, you'd, you'd, you know, the town would go short. I mean, right, especially in Woodbury. But. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said adverse. I should have said impact. <laughs> I didn't want to prejudge anything. Okay, any questions on, on this slide? <clears throat> okay. I, I, have, I have a question. Sure. It's on the attitude. Mm -hmm. the ba the back You're talking about the tax impact when somebody buys a big parcel. Um, you guys don't seem to know the answer to that. This company that just bought Woodbury Mountain and all that. How come you guys don't know the answer to that? I get. Well, I do know the answer to that, Dennis. That's not going to impact um, the taxes at all for the town. It's not. Not at all. Even though they have a really big tax. tax. Yeah. No, they're they're under they're basically are under the same program as the current use program. So they are. Yeah. It won't affect our taxes at all. Okay. But I'm just thinking of the town taxpayers and all that. Yeah. Kind of yeah. No. It, um, it won't make a bit of difference. Yeah. yeah. That that actually came up in, one, in the hearings here. It did. Yeah. 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 yeah, the prior owners were in current use, and the new owner's going to be in current use. And so but they're actually paying less than the current owners. No, no, they're, no, they're paying the same, same amount. They pay the same, same amount. amount. Thank you. It's too bad we couldn't get some of those carbon credits. <laughs> nice. Get some what? We tried. Carbon credits. <laughs> we, did, we did investigate that, but I know. we just couldn't get any traction. No, that's kind of the business. Yeah. Right. That's how they sustain themselves, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. In time. Yeah, one of the ways. Yeah, one of the ways, yeah. All right, natural setting portion of the town plan. Uh, the following goals, again, were developed and, you know, developed through, again, uh, outreach, public outreach, uh, in person meetings. So the goals are stated here for the natural settings. Uh, one of the biggest ones was increased recreational opportunities in Woodbury. That was one of the, the biggest asks during, during the uh, outreach. This is a sidebar, but uh, the Shoreline Protection Bill, um, I know when it, when, it, it, when it was first passed and before it was, it was fully implemented, there was quite a lot of activity. And I don't think there is, there is much state oversight on that shoreline protection. I would agree with you. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, only one, really one person doing almost all that work. 
And it's, uh, it's another example, having spent eight years in the legislature, of how many laws are, are, are passed, but they're never enforced. And uh, it's a feel good while you're there, but they really are, for the most part, ineffectual. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's, a, it, it's, it's a problem, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. If people see a possible violation and report it, to the A&R Enforcement Division. I've seen them come out and... I did that and it wasn't, at, and, and nobody came. Didn't work in your didn't case? Didn't work, no. Okay, well, in some cases it does. Yeah. It's like enforcement of all the natural resource laws. I don't know, two fines that they've levied, and they were both $5,000, which is the maximum. Mm -hmm. In Woodbury? This was down in Southern Garden State. Oh, no. And it's where somebody came in and we were talking big. That's it, huh? Deep pockets. <clears throat> the only one I also know about is the Green River <clears throat> Reservoir. There was a big sting yeah. about that, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, next. Sense of community. Uh, this is pretty self explanatory. However, a major issue. Uh, for the survey was what do we have at, at a downtown community in, in, in terms of assembling and sharing, uh, you know, it's, it, it's an ongoing issue. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I hope we spend some effort looking at it. Uh, that, that is one of our priority to do things and start to go for a village center designation and just address, try to have something in the in Woodbury Village. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things that the Planning Commission will be discussing quite a bit. But it's obvious yeah, that it's... It, it, discussion it, 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 yeah, we've actually... As, been as, been, as we switch from finishing up the plan, we've been looking at our, our next steps, and that's one of the next steps that we are working looking at. And we'll be moving on, hopefully this gets passed, and then we can go, go right. farther, and if it doesn't, well, then we'll go back to the drawing board. Okay. Graduate. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it's tough because our illustrious forefathers um, put Woodbury in a swamp. Uh, and, uh, this this and, is uh, the ideal spot to, to uh, <laughs> I don't tell you, right? It's in a floodplain. Yep. Oops, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the state keeps pushing for, you know, development in downtowns. You know, there's, mm -hmm. you know, between a rock and a hard place, or rock and between a rock and a wetland in Woodbury, there's really no not much uh, possibility and, uh, for downtown. There is South Woodbury Village. That is another village center in it Woodbury, um, which doesn't have the flooding issues. I'm not sure the people living there would be all that <laughs> excited about it. There's some land there. Development, but uh, you say that, but if that mill pond dam ever went, it would create some some problems. <laughs> And it, you know, what was it back? I don't know, long well, from the yeah. There's not, there's June not a lot of that flood. That there's not a lot of water in that. I mean, there definitely it will create a an initial flood, but there's not a lot of water in that mill pond. Mm -hmm. It's pretty shallow. They have to pay the state so much every year in case it does fail. Yeah. The, well, the person who unfortunately owns the property that the Amazon has to pay the state a certain amount every year. Yeah. And the funny thing is, if you do anything to it, you just open the, the gates to yeah. all kinds of liability and stuff. So it's better to just, mm -hmm. yeah, just leave them alone. No the, state, the state would help to take the dam out, but they won't help to try to repair the dam. <coughs> they won't what? They won't help um, finance any kind of repair of the dam. Yeah. It but would they, have to be remediation and we would have to get a grant for that. Yeah. Yeah. But the town now offer the grant. No. Town plan no. is the only thing that will give us the opportunity. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. Get it. So here's the goal statement for the sense of community.
And the last bullet, increase the vitality of our village centers. South Woodbury is mentioned. Mm -hmm. And Woodbury, Woodbury Village, where we're sitting right now. Now, whether or not that's uh, to do a wastewater study here in this village, or to try and find a location for a store, which folks in the uh, surveys indicated that uh, is necessary in town. You know, we'll have to see. But uh, yeah, a sense of community was an important part of uh, responses to our surveys. And these are the goals in order to uh, uh, reach, reach those folks who uh, indicated that this was an important part of the town of Woodbury. This may be off, um, you know, but the Methodist Church, um, I mean, it's not, it's not used anymore. Um, no. no. I had a fair amount of communication with the church uh, uh, when we were you know, looking at different um, stormwater sites. That one of the sites was designated as a church, so I had to uh, get in contact with them. Um, and, you know, they mentioned that, no, there, there isn't a congregation and they don't really know what to do with the building, which, you know, I didn't ask them if they were thinking of selling it, but there is a possibility of somebody, I think, you know, of it being purchased by somebody, some entrepreneur I'll call, um, and making that into something. Um, but again, you know, there's no, no sewage. No sewage, no water, also yeah. in the footprint. So, I mean, the, 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 you know, the fellow with the business, the automotive business there, there's no, he doesn't have water, he doesn't have a sewage um, mm -hmm. there. So, you know, for any of the buildings, you know, the, the old, the new old store, or, um, you know, they have holding tanks, which are probably, I would think, would be sort of inconvenient. Um, so. But that's the only option, isn't it? That's the only if option. If you're going to build in a floodplain, that's yeah. all we have. The, the post office does have a septic system. I don't know if the, I think the fire station is a, has something similar um, in that little green, you know, right next to the mm -hmm. Kingsbury branch. Um, but for most places here in town, um, but that would village, get, that would not get approved in the modern. Yeah, right. yep. that's the answer to that. And what about this bathroom? Mm -hmm. This is a holding tank. Separate holding tank. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 There's no way that you would be able to get that approved. No. I mean, that's the short answer. Uh, yeah. What's what would be approved uh, when you say a new septic? In a e e even a, a holding tank. A holding tank, yes. Yeah, yeah. that's not a septic. Yeah. 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 I think it's going to be that would be a that would be a tough. They have to let be, do something. Be a tough sell, but mm -hmm. yeah. Because we're talking about grant money to do this, mm -hmm. and so we would be looked sort of mm -hmm. poorly upon for not making mm -hmm. forward progress. One of the things that the planning commission hasn't discussed this too much yet, but we did discuss it a little bit, and we'll be discussing it more is perhaps um, seeing what it would cost to have a feasibility study done for some type of um, septic sewage water system in, in Woodbury Village. Um, whether it's, you know, to basically find out if it's even worth thinking about. Um, I mean like a municipal system? Yeah. Yeah. They keep talking. Uh, um, Has everybody ever looked at it seriously in terms of what? what? No. Not that I'm aware of. But we have other surveyed work where we have perk tests and things like that that could be pretty useful in informing us as to whether or not that's a reasonable possibility. Michael, did that village plan get into the wastewater issue in town and in the village? Was I don't, that a 2015? No, I, I don't think plan? so. Okay. No. Although I can't imagine it not being mentioned. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It might be a good starting point to see what yeah, that consultant yeah, was thinking. So I turned the heat off just to, so we wouldn't have to compete over the fans, but if people are getting cold, I can turn it back on again. I vote for that. Put a jacket on. I don't have much for a jacket. That means I have to 
speak of it. We're not going to show it. We're not going to record it very well. What's that? I don't know. That thing is so loud. Oh, it is. That's why. Well, let's just see. I think that's the intake. That's why we did not know. Oh, that's the intake. Hi, Ginger. Let's not do that. It's Ginger, isn't it? It's Ginger. Yes, we can. <laughs> I, I worked with uh, Callus and Sony for a couple of years, about 100 pages. And I thought it was interesting that they allow multifamily uh, dwellings. And what are you saying? Well, we have a multifamily dwelling here. Two family dwellings are secured. But it isn't in the zoning, is it? Yeah. I, think I think in the village, more so, I think in the rural residential, I think two families is as much as it goes. And uh, my, my concern there is we're all getting old. Pardon me? We're all getting old. And, uh, uh, I'm getting old. Getting old. Yeah, the well, it's about a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and getting we, right this right? <laughs> we've got we got house dwellings with septic systems that are designed for three or four bedrooms. That's six or eight people. And if you have one person in the house, maybe two, and there's a housing shortage, it seems like there will be a solution. There, there is a program called Home Share where, you know, if you're a, an older person or a person, you know, living in a situation like you just mentioned, mm -hmm. if that person is willing, um, they can, uh, Home Share will help set them up with other people to live in the house. Um, but that has to be up to the individual in the house. But there is, it's a, not a, it's not a state program, it's kind of a non-profit, but it, it, um, it does exist. I don't have to, I haven't read the statute yet, but I think in 2020 the state legislature said, uh, they said a lot about accessory dwellings, mm -hmm. and it's, it could have quite an impact in the world. It will uh, take care of, I guess, solve this thing about one family for three acres. I think that's mentioned in the plan. Yeah, it's in the plan, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. you can, yes. You can put a, a 900 square foot accessory dwelling on a, on a property and not according to that statute, and not have any issues. But they would still have to have their own septic system. You can't say that two well, people I, are living yeah. in three bedrooms, so there's an excess that the state uh, would never go for that. that house. I've done it. Yeah. Will somebody convert it? If they convert it, no, they convert it. They have inspect it. Right. They have a system inspected. The problem is the state start to plant down. It's two kinds of inspections. It's a hundred dollar smaller. It's a hundred dollar what? Smaller. <laughs> and so the guy drives so up and out of the cameras and he goes all through and it's a thorough, thorough inspection. I think they're trying to, trying to shift to the more thorough inspection. I think another part of that statute is that you can designate 900 square feet, up to 900 square feet in your house within your dwelling as an accessory dwelling unit as well. It doesn't have to be a separate structure. But does that, the question is about the septic. Is, is so you could tie into your existing uh, system? It's a, under it's that? part of the, she's talking about subdividing in your house. In your house. Oh, in the house. I, right. thought, I thought you could have a freestanding accessory. You can. That's a different subject. Yes. Well, that's we, what I'm asking. It's, it's either or. It's what Bob had mentioned, you know, and, Place, places under two acres, you can put this 900 square foot dwelling. Mm -hmm. So how does that affect the septic business? You just can't, you just can't add that. You know, you're not changing the septic design or what's going in. It's just changing the square footage use of the property. Yeah, but I mean, that, that, that would mean that for your gray water, you'd have to have a drywall or something? I mean, no. No, you can designate any part of your house or whatever you want. You just can't change the 
use of if you've got two bathrooms in your house, you can't change and put a third bathroom, which you could say this half of this house is for my in-laws and this half is for me. That doesn't affect your sewer in any way. I, I, I just don't understand how you can have a freestanding building. It doesn't seem we're not hearing that there's a clear clear uh, explanation how the how the septic works, but I think the, what I've seen is it's all based on bedrooms and the defaults. You can have one person in the house and say, well, we're, we're gonna, you're going to have to design for two. And uh, that's, that's the way it is. Two bedrooms. You can have ten bathrooms, mm -hmm. but the bedrooms are what drive the uh, designs. designs and the well, right. the... Uh, I believe the Planning Commission probably will get into accessory dwelling units and the requirements when they investigate the zoning. Yeah, that would definitely be a part okay. of that. Yeah. So, hi. I, um, can I segue into this with Norman's comments? Sure. Um, he's not able to come in. I'll just read what he wrote because the first part of what he's talking about also deals with housing. So I thought I could say what he meant, if that's okay. Um, so to, this is Norman. To the Woodbury Select Board and Planning Commission as well as attendees at the public hearing on the town plan April 16, 2022. Tell me about this. <laughs> I'm sorry I wasn't able to attend the meeting in person. I would like to submit my comments. First, I would like to compliment the Planning Commission for their work on the plan. It is very thorough and well thought out. I have a few issues with the plan that I would like to enumerate. Bullet point. It is a difficult balancing act to deal with protection and use. The plan falls short on allowing for the creation of affordable housing. The plan mentions that on average, only two or three permits for new houses are issued a year a reflection of the difficulty people have in acquiring suitable sites. There is very little land available for housing in Woodbury. Between protected lands, unsuitable sites, and current and proposed strategies for land use in the plan, very little land is left. I'd suggest a few changes to the plan. First, a strategy that allows for and incentivizes planned unit developments would help. Next, residential development should be allowed on forest blocks with some provisions to allow for continued forestry operations. A significant number of potential sites along the roads should be allowed. In addition, considering the fact that there is currently no central systems for water or sewer disposal in the town centers, the continued use of rural residential areas is necessary. A decrease in density in those areas will make it more difficult for people to be able to obtain an affordable housing site. The energy plan, if I may continue, should not be included in the proposed town plan. The plan acknowledges that the majority of households in Woodbury use renewable wood fuels and then goes on to change the majority of them, 353, to heat pumps. This is inconsistent with both the comprehensive energy plan and the stated goal of maintaining the working force. The energy plan is extremely biased in favor of heat pumps, despite the negative effects on the power grid and the high cost to end users. The fact that it is flawed is acknowledged by the Planning Commission in the document itself. There is no requirement that the town adopt an energy plan Let's not do, let's not include a flawed plan. Thank you for your considering these comments. Norm. Yeah. Could we have a copy of that, Ginger, please? Most certainly. Thanks. Thank you. And yeah, tell Norm, thanks. So an enhanced energy plan is a requirement to be attached to the town plan that's statutorily required that we have this as part. Is, is it required that it be part of the town plan? It is. That we have one. We have one and that it be included 
as part of the town plan. But is it required that that one be included, or is it A and enhanced energy plan be included? It is required that this enhanced energy plan be included in this town plan. And you were not allowed to make any changes? We did make significant changes to, yeah. the, to the energy plan. And who wrote that? Combination of the Planning Commission and the Regional Planning Commission. And that thermal you're, you're talking the about. Box. Yeah, I think it's table 8.2. It is the uh, thermal energy yeah. projections, projections for 2025, 2030, up to 2050. We balked on that. We said, you, you're crazy. Woodbury can never do this. And Woodbury won't do this. Um, so we adjusted the language to say that that portion of, of the energy plan doesn't fit the town of Woodbury, and that the Planning Commission will look into it to make it more Woodbury centric. And that energy plan can be amended just as the town plan can be amended, amended at any time. Can it not be amended before it's put in the plan now? It's in the plan now. Right. Can it not be amended now before it's passed? Uh, well, that would hold up approving a town plan. Um, but that's what this select board is here for, to decide whether anything that comes in from the public convinces us to ask them to make changes. See if we can do that eight talk to the uh, energy committees in there. But we have some eight more years to make amendments. For the third time. I don't know the time you have. What happened yeah, to eight okay. years? So the plan will last for eight years. Eight two. Yeah. And it's not regulatory. And, and it's not regulatory. Oh, this is a yeah. eight. But so you could have a plan you don't need to stick to. Yeah, yeah, it, is is that? Let's see. Wait. I'm sorry. This, it's not regulatory. In other words, this is these. no. No. It's not so what are we using then, as far as regulation? On on on. These are number one. These are goals. Okay. Goals and guidelines. Goals and guidelines. So we're not. You know, no one's going to put a gun to our head and say we have to install by 2050 204 heat pumps and have uh, only nine efficient wood, wood burning units in town. That's ridiculous. And we, we amended, we, we, yeah, we understand that. We amended it to say, okay, and I'll just read you this briefly. It's, it's in, it's on page 13 of the energy plan. It has been acknowledged that there are obvious shortcomings associated with the local data based upon the top-down method of disaggregating regional data to the municipal data and associated targets. However, the total target for the new heat pumps far exceeds, okay, and that's key, far exceeds what the town considers to be realistic and feasible, okay? So we're telling them this part of the energy plan is just not realistic. So they understand that. Mm -hmm. Okay. As only, and this is key, as only 140 homes currently heat with fossil fuels, that's in Woodbury, the target of 353 new heat pumps appears to be a considerable stretch. You know, I would have used stronger language, but I would have said they're out of their mind. So, anyhow. We understand that this table is flawed and that in the future we will work to make sure that this thermal, it's called thermal sector conversion targets per year, and these again are just targets, gets changed. So it's acknowledged that Woodbury's not going to adhere to that. This was one of the first things we took up two years ago. Yeah. That's right. And those, those targets were created by the state. Um, and, so, and the Regional Planning Commission because it fit right. Washington County, but not Woodbury. Right. We were separate. And, and we, we, are, we recognized it and we worked on it for the uniqueness of Woodbury. But this was something that we were aware of when we first started. We first started. So I get the feeling that um, 
you felt that in order to get regional planning commission approval, we had to include that stuff? What no. stuff? It was, the, the energy enhanced energy plan that's, as that's, they proposed it. The enhanced energy, it's not as they proposed it. Okay, that's been changed. Yeah. That, right. That's the final that. language right, but, that but we proposed sure, yeah. be included in the enhanced energy plan. They took that and they said, we don't know if we can run with this. So they did. They did what? They approved it. They, they approved they gave it. Us yeah, that's right. Because as Dave said, that was the first, one of the first things when we were going through the first draft, the initial draft of the enhanced energy plan. You know, it's like, you're crazy. You know, why would we do that when, you know, we have foresters in town that supply cordwood that for heating homes, you know, not only is it bad economics for the town of Woodbury, it just doesn't fit. You know, so. We looked at uh, Elmore's enhanced energy plan and it was much more, it wasn't, it didn't have the bias numbers like you see here and, you know, Elmore, is a little bit more relative to Woodbury than um, Berlin or Montpelier or Waterbury. Um, Except they're in Lamoille County. Well, but Woodbury doesn't have to stay in the Central Vermont Regional Plan. The, we could actually petition to be a part of Lamoille oh, yeah. if we want to. It's a process, but um, it, it might make sense. We've talked well, to you. If they're not telling us what to do. No, it's, it's just numbers on a piece of paper. Right, really. Your goals. And as Dave indicated, you know, we're lumped in in Washington County, we're lumped in with Montpelier, Waterbury, places like that who probably would install more heat pumps than uh, efficient wood burning units, but certainly not here at Woodbury. I'm sorry I didn't bring it with me, but in last week's News of Citizen, there was an article from the Morristown Planning Commission. They're having a very similar discussion. So if you're interested, I can interested, I can copy that. Yeah. I mean, we're both, hopefully we're done with it at this point. And Worcester doesn't have zoning. No. no. So they don't, have, they don't have to do anything. No, they don't have a town plan. They don't have a town plan. Right. Well, I know. It's been a slip Ever since the Anton Nuclear zoning petition, the app in Worcester, that was a long time. That was a long time. Mm -hmm. So Michael, you're on the Regional Planning Commission, right? I'm the Woodbury rep. To right. The you're a member of the commission, and do they do they discuss this at all? Um. No. Okay. Thank no. You. no. <laughs> um, it could be something that could be presented to be discussed. I mean, I went to a um, uh, uh, a wood burning kind of state presentation a few years ago. Um, and the state, you know, they used to have an incentive program for people to upgrade their wood burning stoves, the, um, which they eliminated. And there, so now this, this state, all the incentive programs are for pellet stoves, um, which don't work when the power goes out. And there are no uh, there are no pellet makers in Vermont, so everything, it just, you know, why they did that, I don't know, but that's what they're, that's what the state wants people to focus on. And mm -hmm. the same thing with the electricity, I mean, the state really wants everybody to have an electric car, everybody to have, you know, heat pumps, they're, they're really focused on electricity um, because of the renewable sources for it, I think. and and. So, on the ground, it's not all that realistic, in my opinion. Well, in the meantime, they're trying to shut down the uh, the, the, the the plant over in uh, what is it? Not Highgate, but the, you know the one on the uh, Connecticut River. Uh, right. 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 You know, and here in here in Woodbury, we have yeah, hardwood collector. There's no nobody in town. If they wanted to put up solar panels, they can't do it right now because hardwood collector. Well, that's, reach the max that they're willing to take on. Um, so, you know, we're, we're being pushed, every municipality is being pushed to have renewable energy resources like solar, um, but our power company isn't able to take on any more of those projects. So, you know, that's the kind of bind that 
the legislature um, state needs to address. And they have now they're to. wading into this thing called the clean heat standard. Right. It's a crazy mess. And that's the whole push with these heat pumps. You know, it's an electric source, so it's clean energy, supposedly. Maybe. Um, <laughs> but, um, supposedly. But they're not, I mean, none of this was paying attention to rural tax. Right. I mean, it wasn't there from the inception. So that's what we put in the enhanced energy plan, that this really isn't relevant to Woodbury, and we recognize that, and um, but we're sort of being required to have that in there um, in order to have it approved. Well, I think our statement is strong. Right. Strong that, uh, you know, we don't believe it, and mm -hmm. you know, we're not going to take it anymore. Right. <laughs> we're going to do what we damn well please. Sort of. Can so, we write that down, please? Can we get that on record? What, we're not going to take it? What did he just say? We can damn well do what we please. Oh. Let's, not, let's not put that in the general. <laughs> I think we did that. Let's put that in the general. And, and now, and, and, an accessory item that we and, don't and, actually and, and, and we can uh, leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is that element in Woodbury. I, I got to say it, I'm proud of it. There, you know, it's, little, you know it's, it's got some independence. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, the select board should take a copy of Norman's letter and yeah. if you... Yes, yeah. And then view what we wrote about the, inter, in the energy, and energy plan and, and see if that is okay. Um, yeah, I think, I think he's spot on, especially in regards to those heat pumps mm -hmm. and, and, then, and then undervaluing uh, wood, wood uh, required uh, yeah. heating. Uh, yeah. But I think that you guys have already actually put this in the plan. We have. We have. I mean, it's. I, I think it's fairly well stated in the plan. Uh, without that, without the heat pumps and everything else. No, no. The, the heat pump is only a chart. Is right? a chart. It's a chart. And yeah. it has to be in this. It's not something that we don't really have a choice. Why? People are having to do because we that's one of the things that was required. We stated as our as defiance and our opposition to it, but we did it in an easy way. Yes. <laughs> it wasn't a non-offensive way. <laughs> It was, very, it was very important. We kept coming back to it throughout the process. Yeah, and Norman, Norman actually met with us a number of times, right. yeah. making that same point that he did in the letter. Yeah. We discussed it with him. And to answer, I heard a question regarding whether or not an energy plan does have to be included in a town plan. So the overarching uh, statute is Title 24. Uh, Subchapter 5, Municipal Development Plan, and it's part 4382, and it's called Required Elements of the Plan. And the ninth required element is an energy plan, including an analysis of energy resources, needs, scarcities, costs, and problems within the community. Blah, 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 statement of policy on conservation of energy, including programs such as thermal integrity, standards for buildings, and on and on and on. So that enhanced energy plan has to be a component in the town plan in order for it to uh, be approved. Well, you could have started from zero and written a whole other thing. But that, you know, <laughs> that's a lot of extra work. And the regional planning commission was basically working for you. But not with the draft energy plan. No, no, no. no they, the, we hired the Regional Planning Commission to help us with the actual town plan. We did the uh, enhanced energy plan on our, on our own. With, really? Obviously, they were advising us, but um, in, in more of their capacity as an advisory role rather than a contracted service. Yep. Yeah. 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 This was done before, I think. Yeah, this, we, mm. we discussed that and started this process before the town meeting where we got the grant for the Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We did a, a contractor. So we were on this early. Yeah, before we started the town plan. Mm -hmm. And again, the letter from the Regional Planning Commission say that the town plan does meet all the statutory requirements mm -hmm. for a town plan, including the enhanced energy plan, which again can be amended 
if we moved to Memorial County, we would probably have a different <laughs> thermal energy <laughs> goal table. I'm sure we would. Yeah, and I'm not advocating that we do move to the Lamoille region, but it is an option. We could if we chose to. Do you, what do you know about the dynamics difference? Uh, what are the... uh, I don't know much. I haven't really looked into that. But, um, I know the Elmore, the Elmore plan, which was more relative to right. Woodbury, um, they're part of Lamoille, and, and that the way they had, had worded it was, was fine, the Lamoille region. It was almost the opposite. There yeah. were fewer heat pumps <laughs> than new efficient wood burning units. Much fewer. It's just like the inverse. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the table, the same kind of. Yeah, precisely. The table, created table. If I was creative, I would have cut and pasted that table from Elmore's town plan, energy plan, and just shoved it into our energy plan and see if they caught it. So if anybody's been following the clean heat standard, which does involve moving to electricity, it's currently in the Senate. And if anybody wants to contact the senators to discuss it, this is the time. But the bottom line is um, this, isn't, this isn't enforced. I mean, it, right. it, no, it, it's so just a, a table on a piece of paper. It's wallpaper. Yeah. It's basically wishful thinking on by the state's part, I think. When I ran into some portions about a month ago, I've been burning wood in the most efficient, clean oil there is. It's almost no particular coming out. I had exceeds by far the EPA standards. Please shut them down. We can't make them. Not that particular unit, you mean? All of them, including mine. Including mine? Including mine. Which is what brand? Garner. Oh, really? Yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's like somebody from the oil industry went in and said, wrote something and handed it to Congress and said, this is what we're going to do. Huh. So, so that you can't access them, you can't buy them. Is that what you're no, saying? No, you can't. You got 40 orders. Hmm. No. <laughs> you can't even tell my spring that I'm burning it. You look at stats and it's. That Sounds like we're going back. That's important. All right, on to rural infrastructure part of the plan. Where are we? What page now? We're on slide 16 of 32. 16. Page number nine. We're only on page nine. On page nine, please. I'll try and speed it up here. Rural infrastructure, so uh, again, utilizing the results of the uh, surveys, uh, these are the conditions that they found. Challenging conditions for road maintenance, not the road crew, but the conditions that they have to deal with when working on the roads. Lack of sidewalks in the village. And the key was retaining the school, and that equals you know, a huge community benefit, in our, at least in our plan. Investing in the town hall, funding public safety and emergency management activities as necessary, high-speed broadband and mobile communications, mobile cell service not available to most residents. I think that's being addressed currently with CV fiber. High-speed broadband. Yes. Yeah. And the last bullet is support transition away from fossil fuels. So any questions on that particular slide? We, we were concerned too, lack of sidewalks or bike lanes. You know, a lot of folks in town like to bike and typically they go on you know, a class four road or class three roads to, to do their biking. But once in a while you have to get out onto Route 14 to access those roads and <laughs> these little skinny, you know, bike lanes for you. So we were hoping, you know, if we could get something done in, in the village to have a wider bike lane, at least for transitioning to different roads in town. You're talking about on the highway? Yes. 
I don't know how you can do that. We give up our little green here. Yeah, and then right, and then right back and forth. I mean, I mean, yeah. it's a dangerous road. It sure yeah. is. I would much, I'd much rather that. see you put the resources in terms of connecting the uh, railroad uh, track to, to Hardwick and then accessing all the trails thereafter. I mean, sure. That's, yeah, I'm on that one. That one, well, that's really great. That's, and they're, they're really working hard on it. They're it's going to be finished for two years. Nature projects, yeah. yeah. 90, that's 93 miles mm -hmm. from St. Jay to Swamp. And it's a great ride. It's a great ride. It's pretty level the whole way. It's going, to, it's going to really make a difference, I think, in our economy. To sure. These, these, uh, it's going to go all the way from what, St. Jay to Swanton? Swanton. Swanton. Yeah, yeah, it's finally done. The western yeah. part of the state has been built and being yeah. used for quite a few years now. Yeah. The biggest thing is the, the, the number of bridges in Wolfen had quite a few of them got washed out. Washed and, out. Uh, and, uh, mm -hmm. But they're working on it. They're working on those. Patriots right doing yeah. a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a lot of volunteer effort. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tremendous, which we have noticed. But we also have reached out. So the goals for the rural infrastructure <coughs> se se section of the plan are, are stated in this slide. And the last bullet: increase energy efficiency and conservation while supporting transition to renewable sources. Wood heat is pretty renewable, I think. Mm -hmm. Future land use, and again, future land use is, you know, somewhat restrictive in terms of trying to build multi-dwelling houses in, in the villages, especially this village, because of the, uh, just where it is. Something that uh, some, some towns have now with planned unit developments, where you can get 50% more almost twice as uh, many dwellings by concentrating them into a, a small crack, say you got 50 acres, and then you it's like five acres. Everybody's all one or more, or one or more. Yeah. 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 And then the rest is all left to uh, undergrad. Instead of parsing it all up into a kind of no. individual plots. <laughs> On the side of the island, at least more open land, more like a mini village. I know where you mean. Yeah. Right outside of the corner? Yeah, so okay. don't take this. All right. Future land use map, I believe. Initially, we had three future land use maps, and we poured over those. And uh, so, in, in the body of the plan, the plan will identify future land use districts. Uh, which will uh, communicate important components of Woodbury's vision for investment and preservation. So I think the next slide has the uh, land use map on it. Any question on this slide? And this is the, uh, again, the land use map. And the preferred, this is the preferred option. So we poured over this and came up with the purpose would be, one of the purposes is to promote increased protections of water quality and habitat. And another change would be the addition of two village neighborhoods. And you can tell, I don't have a pointer with me, but we increase the uh, village neighborhoods. I can. Can you see my pointer? You can't see my... No, you can't. So we increase the village districts. So right here, we increased it up in the category. We increased the, the village district. And then in uh, South Woodbury, we increased yeah. it going towards the uh, town garage. So you think there's developable land up on Cabot Road? Well, we looked at developable... developable land, and there's not much, but there's high-speed broadband there. Yeah. So if someone wanted to come in and uh, set up some sort of shop, you know, they would have high-speed broadband to utilize their point-of-sale terminals or something like that. And 
in Southport Ferry, there's land going on both sides of the road going out towards uh, the town garage that could be yeah. utilized for you know, something like that because there's high speed broadband. Michael, you have high speed broadband. I have it, you have a Southport Brick Mobile yeah. Shop. Goes down Dog Pond Road a little ways, but not too far. Right. Not very far. Not, not down to the town garage. It's right. It's a bit far. How far does it go up the cabin? I don't know. I even made it. No, no. It makes a heck of a difference to have that. Well, it wouldn't take that much if it doesn't go, let's say, if it goes maybe a quarter of a mile. Just when you say high speed broadway, are you talking about Comcast? Yeah, I'm yes. talking fiber optic, right? That's what yeah, you call it. fiber well, optic. Fiber is the only thing that we want. Is there fiber optic? Yeah. No, it's all coax. It's all coax. Yeah. Comcast. Comcast is all cable, yeah. Yeah, coax. coax. But, it'll be, but it is considered high speed. Compared to phone lines, right? Well, at our house in Lake Hill Road, since we work still a little bit, uh, we have 300 you know, megabits. And that's what we have. Yeah. And we're on 14. Yeah. So we have you know, high speed. I think the FCC says it's 100 megabits down and 6 or 7 megabits up. I think that's the FCC's uh, guidance yeah. for high speed yeah. guidelines. Yeah. But that should increase as electronics get better and fiber, fiber, a fiber gets dropped off at your home. You'll see a gigabit down. So mapping out the future, so the town plan does contain an implementation program, and there are three separate parts of the implementation program. There are goals, objectives, and actions. And the, uh, the bold sentence on the bottom of the slide, successful implementation is a partnership with town, residents, property owners, local, and state officials. And I know Jim worked a, a lot on the implementation program, and he led us to coming up with the time frames, short-term goals, mid-term goals, and ongoing goals. And we identified, again, possible entities and partners to help us with the implementation goals. So and they're all stated just a few, there could be, there probably are more that would help us with the implementation program. And the next slide is just a, an example of an implementation program. And I have to put my glasses on for this one. Natural features and ecological systems goals and the goal statement is in the yellow part mm. and the objective is under the object objective column the action responsible parties the time frame whether it be short term mid term or ongoing so in this case it would be short term initially and then ongoing possible partners are land trust Vermont Fish and Wildlife and foreign forest parks and recreation. And you'll see throughout the implementation program in the town plan, any actionable items are identified short term, mid term, ongoing. There's a statement, the objective, the action, responsible parties, time frame, and so forth. It's all spelled out. So we have two board members of the Northern River Land Trust here. Uh, how, how do you think the land trusts are playing, playing into this? I didn't quite catch that. Well, it, it talks about uh, possible partners, and the land oh. trusts are part of that. And uh, you know, the Northern River's Land Trust certainly has a presence in Woodbury and around here. Uh, yeah, well, they definitely should be a partner. Um, 
I think probably when we did this table, they weren't, they hadn't yet done that purchase. They had not. So, yeah, they definitely are an important partner now. I mean, I think an important, you know, going forward, uh, what's going to be critical is for us to kind of stay on top of all these actions, you know, in the implementation program and to try to bring the different groups together that are supposed to work on each one of them. And that's going to be challenging because there are so many of them. And so is we're going to have... Each one of the land trusts, or when you say... Uh, I missed that. No, I mean, the, uh, just in general, the entire implementation program, you know, right. has so many actions. Right. And, you know, each one of them requires somebody to do something, right. you know, some group to do something, right. in, often in coordination with each other. And so the planning commission is going to have to kind of be the coordinator and the motivator, I guess, to get that done. And um, so, yeah, it's just going to be a lot of work. Well, I have, I have land in, in Vermont Land Trust, and, and there are serious restrictions in what you can do uh, once you're in a land trust. Mm -hmm. I assume you have, in the Northern River Land Trust has similar uh, restrictions as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, I guess my point is that we're sort of at the beginning of the journey here in a lot of ways, you know, even though this is a major milestone. <laughs> yeah. Are you think is the planning commission thinking of taking all those goals and sort of prioritizing them? Oh, we'll have to. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've already, we've already been discussing we've, that. Yeah, we've already started talking about that, you know, that okay. some of the things definitely need to get started right away. Right. As soon as the plan is approved. You kind of right. you kind of hamstrung until yeah. the plan is approved. We're working, as I said before, the Monday meeting in setting some of the same goals we've already established, like uh, designating the town villages, uh, and also looking at ordinances. But we're just it just started starting process. We're hoping that this gets through, and then we can otherwise we'll go back to the drawing board and start phase one. But at this, we are we are um, looking forward. We're optimistic. No, this, we, this wasn't properly um, set up for approval today. This was just a hearing. Um, right. But, but our next select board meeting is on the 25th. And right. It could be approved then. Uh, right. so Mon once well, it's on Monday the is our next meeting, so we'll just continue. To yeah, we're, we're still you know, just kind of discussing what we feel the priorities are. Yeah. We've got a pretty weird feeling for that, I think still discussing it amongst ourselves. Would a representative be willing to come to the select board meeting on the 25th? Uh, yes. Put we could put it on the agenda. We could put you on the agenda. Yeah, no, there will be somebody from the plan. Before the select board actually votes? Sure. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can make sure that there are any, any addendums that we think are critical before that time. Mm -hmm. that could I, I don't think we have any that are drastic thus far. Yeah, we don't, yeah, we'll have to, um, we'll have to stop that. we don't have time between now and the meeting, we don't have another meeting, so at the next meeting we'll discuss whether we learned anything today that would, should result in more changes. Which board, not, which, which board are you referring to? The select board. Oh, select board. Yeah. This, and, uh, we, at that meeting, we'll first have that discussion and then we'll decide to go ahead or not. Right. <laughs> so we don't really have a place in between to have the discussion. We just can't get it done before we Right. Yeah. But the next one, we'll Okay. <laughs> and how about Yeah, I mean, we do have eight years to work on this, which sounds like a long amount of time. I mean, yes. you know, from eight years, it's going to go by awful fast. Yeah, that'll go by really yeah. fast, the, considering. The, the best version of the plan that we can have to be approved yeah. is the goal, and you all have done a great, as far as I'm concerned. You all have done a wonderful job. I second that emotion. Ter terrific job. All in favor? Very important job. Well, none of us will probably be here for the next Eight years, and the good new that new passes, the problem will be here for the renewal. 
All right, next slide. The energy plan, which is part of the town plan, the requirement. All right, and this is a requirement of Act 174, which was passed in 2016. And again, I think I had touched upon this earlier, it gives town a higher level of deference in department um, public service 248 hearings, which are sightings of renewable energy projects. And Act 174 requires that our energy plan focus on analysis and targets, pathways and implementation actions, and mapping which are all part of the energy plan. And it's just a table of contents. Analysis, information on current electric use for residential and non-residential. It's a pretty interesting document if you go through it. There's a lot of information uh, about what's, what exists in Woodbury in terms of usage. Uh, targets, these are goals, and again, I can, if I can emphasize goals, these are goals established to provide milestones for thermal efficiency. Again, that, that table eight, renewable energy use and on. And then targets are established for years 2025, 2035, and 2050. Any questions on that slide? And pathways and implementation actions. Uh, you know, pretty similar to what's in the body of the town plan. Uh, and again, it provides a basis of how Woodbury will meet their target year goals. And again, these are goals. Uh, also, there's a section of implementation actions for conservation and efficient energy use, reducing transportation, single occupancy vehicles, and siting of renewable energy generation. Well, we did get, uh, what was that called, the rural transportation. We do have, that was an issue for a while. That it didn't go, it didn't, didn't routinely come by, and, uh, it, and now it does, I believe. I don't think it goes to Harvard, but it does. Yeah, I think there were two bus stops in town. Yeah, two. I think there's a loop now that goes around Morrisville. Yeah, the RCT, yeah. it goes yeah. from Morrisville to Barry, and there's a stop in um, Montpelier, or East Montpelier, for people who want to go to Montpelier. Right. Yep. So um, they stop the parking lot, I take it. Yep. And you can catch another bus. Yep. Or a right bus. Yep. But and I, I don't know how long that's been, but I. It was a three-year program, um, and this is the third years year. It was the last year. Yeah. And whether it will continue or not, um, it's, I mean, it's, it's not drastically It's drastically underutilized. Yeah. Yeah. Especially in rural environments. Mm -hmm. And also within the body of the energy plan, there's a mapping section, and the uh, four bullets indicate what that mapping section intends to do. And the third bullet to me is very important. It allows the opportunity to identify preferred locations for renewable energy development. To do what? We can put this here. The zoning can't, can't stop us. And I didn't go to see what the state law was. They were pretty firm about it. Well, this is what Worcester just ran into. Are no, you talking about solar? Solar panels. And this, this was in a design control district on top of that. Mm -hmm. 
These are these are residential or are these commercial? Residential. Yeah. What's that? Residential. So 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 you were told by the solar installer that there was no option? That that's the yeah, state law again. That doesn't sound There's something funny about that. There was a case have... in Southern Vermont not within the last year where the Act 250 or no, the Public Utility Commission agreed to deny somebody's solar installation because the neighbors didn't want to look at it. This is going the other way. No. All right, that's all I have on the uh, enhanced energy plan. Good. Good. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Okay, next steps for the select board is hold a public meeting. That's today. We're holding a public meeting. Take comments from participants at the meeting. If warranted, make substantial changes to the concept, meeting, extent, or extent of the proposed plan. If that happens, then you have to send the plan back to the Planning Commission, and they would edit the plan accordingly. Then the Planning Commission would have to hold a another public hearing and then the timeline would kick in the select board would have to hold another public hearing and all the things that go along with holding a special public meeting warning it in newspapers and things of that nature so if no changes to the plan are needed then the select board adopts the plan as written or not. Well, and, and Steve, uh, I'm just going to ask. Substantial is sort of a vague term. It's meant to be vague. Okay. So if okay. so, so if you if you so. believe that the planning commission hasn't hit all the statutory requirements in the plan, that would be substantial. Correct. Second would be if we uh, if you thought our recommendations. Remember that map where we increase the size of, of the villages? If you thought that was out of line, that would be a substantial change, because that's land use. So that would be a substantial change. Anything like that. You know, I'm sorry I didn't categorize it. As, that's fine. As, it's just, it's, uh, we want to be clear right. for the public what a substantial change would right. be, because we haven't actually addressed thus far anything in this that would be considered substantial. Well, that's good. Yeah, well, that's good. Mm -hmm. And if the select board chooses not to adopt the plan, then uh, we, we go back to square one. There have to be, in other words, good reason to not to adopt the plan. And if the adoption process you know, takes a year or longer, then the plan is considered rejected out of hand. Okay, if the select board does adopt the plan, then you could submit it to the Regional Planning Commission and also to the Department of Housing and Community Development. And those, both of those submissions are via email, and I have their email address. Lastly, any comments or input? Substantial change zoning would be considered a substantial change, correct? Well, we have, yeah, it would be. If there are, if there are. If you people who live on the other side of Route 14, say, headed toward Paragraph, that have a nice big piece of land, and if you change the zoning, what's that going to do to say, for housing? You're talking about housing on the side hills and the banks. They actually have nice plots of land out there that could be easy to develop. But you're going to change the zoning. Is that going to affect those people? I mean, well, this, I this document, the town plan, doesn't change zoning. It doesn't change zoning at all. It's not an ordinance. Correct. Where, where zoning is an ordinance. But it's in the plan. It's not in the plan to change zoning. It's not. No. No. It could possibly change zoning, but it's not something that's stated in the plan. 
in order to change zoning, you would have to take a look at the plan. The Planning Commission would then make a recommendation that zoning should change here or the you know, Lakeshore or Route 14 for that matter. That document would then go to the select board who then would hold a public hearing. And then it has to go to public hearing. Okay. And then it's just, Dennis, it's a process. It's not something okay. that we, it's not That's something. Fine. That answers my question. Yeah. So, so the zoning, the whole zoning ordinance, I mean, the, the town or any town can't do, make any changes to a existing zoning ordinance until there is an approved town plan. And then the whole process for uh, redeveloping or changing the zoning ordinance is pretty laborious and it's very similar to what the planning commission went through in creating the town plan where there would be plenty of hearings people could voice objections uh, you know so it's it's a whole other process that's pr it's pretty it's pretty cut and dry how it proceeds and very similar to what happened for the town plan too so the reason i ask is that if you look around the town as far as you know, we'll talk about building housing, but people move to town, more people, more mm -hmm. business. That is just the good plateau on that side, and it's mm -hmm. owned by just a few people. And I know all the time, you know, you could have some housing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Me personally, I'd rather yeah. see some housing. I mean, if I'm not to get housing development, because yeah. the more people you've got in town, the more business you're going to have, the better chance you've got need in the sidewalk and so on. Right. More kids in school. More kids in school. Right. Sure. There's, I mean, and there's that's a why it scared me with the zoning. You know, you could potentially kill in small housing plants that we don't see. So this is still a recommendation? Yeah. I understand. Just clarify. Yeah. In the meantime, the existing zoning is still in effect. Correct. Right. Yeah, well, I understand that. Yep. No, I'm just talking about the changes in the future. Yeah. And you know, with with a town plan the way it's worded in, in those areas, like up on the Cabot Road, where we sort of designated it as a potential for development, there, you know, the zoning would probably, um, um, you know, address that there wouldn't be restrictions, <coughs> or or there might be certain, hopefully more realistic no, um, I mean, that terms. Production point. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So on commercial commercial buildings, um, it would make sense that Route 14 should be, you know, if, if you know, um, so long as you could uh, find places to put it properly, would you need to have it? Because you don't have uh, commercial zonings all along Route 14. Uh, it's it's basically in these two centers, right? Uh, so if if somebody wanted to put a commercial business on Route 14, what, they would have to go through the state and, and the town to do that. Uh, is, did you all discuss that at all in terms of? Uh, they did discuss it because I proposed it. Right now, um, there's no commercial development allowed anywhere except in the villages. In the villages. But if you uh, had designated Route 14 as a corridor for potential uses, that would make it easier when it comes to zoning to uh, to uh, allow that. I mean, you probably could allow it under zoning anyways, but it would just be nice if it was in the town plan. I think we did mention something about the Route 14 corridor, but I, I believe so. Yes, it, it is. I, I'm sorry. I, I was I just looking for it. You know, I think it's a while to find it. I guess. On, uh, what document is that? Is this the grand town plan? Or, uh, I'll, I'll look for that because I know that we did. Uh, this one. Nope. We did discuss oh, that. Oh, so we'll yeah. Yeah. We did. Yeah. 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 Yep. I'm not sure it's in there. I'm not sure what page it's on, but it yeah. is mentioned. It is. It is very, it, it is actually stated. Um, I just can't find it right now. That, that the entire Route 14 corridor is, is eligible for commercial development. Okay. okay. I'll get that. Yes, I know we, 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 we did that. Because that was actually a comment that was made. No. We put that in there for sure. 14. Unfortunately, we don't have it all. 
I don't have it memorized. I should. We don't have it memorized. <laughs> yeah. we, don't have, we don't have a link to that. Actually, we can spell it. You can't just Google this. And <laughs> well, you could. I could. You can do a search yeah. document thing, I think. So, yeah. So, yeah. I didn't know this issue, so. If, if you go on the website and pull the uh, document down from it and just if you download, just do a search, 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 search for Route 14. Okay. Oh. Okay. Well, but there is some. There is some. There's a little. I mean, this area up on Parker's property, you know, that, that subdivision, and then, um, um, anyway, Gilbert's, you know, in that area, and, you know, I mean, there's, there's some spots. But there's nothing about the town plan that restricts that. That's yep. the reality. It's an opportunity for us to redesign some of our zoning ordinances. But without this, we can't do any of that. That actually was my question. What's that? That was my question. Is there any restriction for such as? None of that. That's a conversation for Where's that? once what the town plan is, is, is adopted, then yeah. every one of these I used to changes to a zoning ordinance yeah. and have to go through its own set of friends of the so. Uh, which is not a uh, terribly rapid process, so, but say, it would be reviewed. So it would be reviewed by the town. You can just right, walk in. Right. 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 Proposed, right. reviewed by the select board, proposed to the town, and then moving on there. So Dennis, I just want that. Yeah, it does. Okay. Pick up fossils. It's not restricted. That's the beach. We're not. Because it looks like it would be too wide, but it was slightly off. Correct. That, you know, but it has a lot of similar characteristics yeah. to the landscape on the beach. Have you ever been to Hawaii? Never been to Hawaii. Uh, My wife's from Hawaii, uh, isn't she? And well, we lived there for, she lived there a bit longer than me. We lived uh, there together for about 20 years. Opportunities for finding a like 25. She's a major pioneer trade from Michigan. Area. You can't use the town by itself, can't, now you're can't in do things that, yeah. that need to do more than the state. Yeah, everybody thought we were the federal government says they have to do. We need to have fun and be able to do it. Right. And the only way that the catch 22 is you can't do what they want you to do is have a town plan and you're going to do it. So well, you're, 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 you're in the wrong well, hard place. So we Some have things to do. But yeah. overall, we're right. at, we know. Otherwise, we can't apply for the funds that were actually Just required last night we were used to do about going projects that we're yes. expected to do. Right. So, the restrictions so we are right. in a strange path. Lifted somewhat. Half. Yeah. yeah, we're thinking about it, going back. It's catch 22. So, we have we we have to have this so so we went forward because you know when I when I came on to the board two years ago, um, like why do we have why do we even need to do this and then watch it, it you, we have to it's like mandated we have to do it so we've done the best we can do with what we have and I, I, I'm very proud of the work we've done. You should be. Uh, you should really thank Jim and Skip because I think they have taken part of really do but Skip's been the really the steward of this, and I want to publicly state um, how grateful I am to him and his stewardship through this two-year process. Thank you. Thank you, Skip. Yeah, thank you, And Skip. so should the town be grateful. Yeah, this, this, is, this is major. This is major. Well, that's all I have. Planning commissioners, do you have anything more? No. no. I just said thank you. Here's so, the I'll ask for any other public comment. And I'll say a formal thank you to the Planning Commission for the efforts that they've done as a select board member. And I will turn it over to the chair of the select board to, well, finish up. Yeah, I, 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 I think it's very helpful. I think uh, it, it's, it's going to de definitely uh, shape the future of this town, which, which we need. and. Uh, and it's it, this is this is major. So I don't expect that there will be any changes to the plan 
coming from the select board. So on the 25th, if somebody wants to come in from the planning commission, uh, uh, we will uh, we will we'll approve this on the 25th. Well, first we'll discuss whether there's any changes. That's correct. We have to first get our public make sure we have an opportunity. Have to public but by the tenor of what we've discussed today, I, I don't see that happening. But and I hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> no. Can't say it yet. <laughs> so, any, any other comments? If not, uh, then I, I think we can uh, close the meeting and, and thank you all for coming. And so, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.